A common question we get asked in the mining industry is what happens to the land after all the resources are extracted? There's a misconception that after all the work is done, the hole just gets left and you have this big open mine site. However, this is a very good example where we're at today of a mine site that's been serving this area for multiple decades and now is reaching the end of its life cycle where all the aggregates have been extracted and it's time to reclaim. So you can see behind me simultaneously, we're extracting the final bits of aggregates as well as actively reclaiming and sloping this all down. So in spring, nature can take its course and trees and grasses can regrow. And then this can look like we weren't even here in the first place. So now that we've got the drone in the air, we're gonna fly around and show you a little bit about what this process looks like before, during, and after. On the left, you can see that's the area we're actively mining where there's still some existing resource. Then you have our plant set up with our stockpiling areas. And then in the top right of the screen, which would be the southeast portion of the property, this has already been mined out and reclaimed. This is stuff that we came in and mined out, I think somewhere in 2018. And since then, uh, the mine owner has done a great job of sloping everything and grading it and restoring it to a seemingly natural landscape, minus the aggregates that previously existed. So over the course of the next few years, uh, grass and trees and nature essentially is gonna take over and uh, repopulate this. Um, you can see that this is graded out smooth so water can flow and this is kind of what it looks like. And if you have a good end use in mind when you open up a mine site and you place your topsoil and overburden accordingly, you can really end up with a nice final product. Um, you can restore the landscape in a fashion that, as I've said numerous times, looks like you were never there in the first place. As we venture over to this section of the mine that we're operating in, we're gonna fly back over the gravel and sand piles that we're manufacturing for this customer. And from this angle, you can get a really good look at the top right section of the screen where there is that seeming ledge. Uh, that's all overburden or, or clay and things like that that weren't desirable to have in the gravel. So what we did was we strategically placed it there on top of the hill. So once we pulled the cut of gravel out from underneath it, we would be able to get on the back side here and I'm gonna flip the drone around so you can see or visualize this. Quick 180. So we'll get on the back of this slope with the dozer once all the aggregates that we're pushing out are extracted and slope this all back down the hill. So essentially what we're doing is I always picture it like a sandwich. So you have your top piece of bread is your overburden, then you have your cheese and lunch meat, that's the stuff you're really after, what you really want, and then the uh, bedrock or underlying material is that bottom piece of bread. Um, what you're doing is you're really just peeling off that top piece of bread, pulling out the lunch meat, and putting the sandwich back together. I know it's a bit of a crude analogy, but that's kind of how I picture it in my own mind. Oftentimes these are multi-year projects. Uh, reason for that is there's no real feasible way to extract all the aggregates and close it all up in a year's time. A lot of this you do with the flow of consumption of the aggregates, right? Um, the customer knows they need 50,000 tons this year, 100,000 tons the next year, et cetera, and you just come in year after year uh, with a long-term reclamation plan in place and you act accordingly when you're stripping and removing topsoil and overburden uh, with that end goal in mind. You know, it's gonna take probably 10, 20 years for the forest to reacclimate, but you know, without this mine site, this, the local area and local infrastructure would not have been able to develop to what it is. This mine site has, has serviced this local area for a long time, 20 plus years, um, as long as I've been aware at least. It's been a huge, huge amount of civilian influx, I guess I'll call it, people moving to this area, uh, tremendous amount of beautiful lakes and scenery around here. And without this mine site, once again, that, that would not have been possible. You wouldn't be able to uh, make the concrete for the home foundations, have riprap for your shorelines at your lake cabin. You wouldn't have aggregates for asphalt for your driveways and highways and all that. So once again, this is a necessary situation uh, if we want to have society as we know it 